Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Trailer Park. Uh, this week is going to be quite a varied week. Uh, in the week where, as we're recording this, it's bloody 30 degrees. 9 at night, or 9 in the evening, and it's still 30 degrees. Bloody fantastic. Great recording weather, apparently. I am again joined by Kenny and Chris. Hello. Hello. And the first trailer we're going to lead off in is... It's largely being called the final trailer, which is more about fucking time and at last uh, Suicide Squad with their Puppet Masters trailer. It's about bloody time it came with the final trailer, although by the time this comes out, it's going to come out the week after. So it's, it's going to come out to you, the listener, next week. Yeah. So about fucking time, it's going to be the last damn trailer. Because fucking hell, it's come out like once, once a fortnight. I, I actually thought that it was, it was going to come, it was coming out um, after Batman vs Superman, before Civil War. I actually thought that um, X Men Apocalypse was coming out in August, and Suicide Squad was coming out where it, where X Men Apocalypse came out. Yeah, the hype trains were quite different. It's uh, hopefully it's not going to follow the same patterns. A lot of hype stuff that's going on at the moment, where it's got hype, 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 it gets released, and it's just bog standard average, and everyone <laughs> hates it because the hype train grabbed it and ran away with it at 60 miles an hour. It's, uh... yeah, it's that's the, the world with... we live with now, unfortunately. It's the same with everything that's gotten hyped throughout the history of cinema. Well, the two recent, well, the two very recent examples. For game for for movies, it's the Ghostbusters one. For for video games, it's the Mighty Number no. Nine. Mm-hmm. Because they're both bleeping off the old franchises, the <laughs> fan favorite franchises, and everyone yeah. goes, "Well, it's really average." Right. So in this trailer, I have to say I noticed a little bit of a difference. Yeah, they've changed it's... tone over the uh, over the months. Yeah. So um. Those reshoots must have come in. I feel like something might have happened to make them change their mind about the direction of the film or how they it, they want it to be perceived because I remember it being really really serious at the beginning of the year. Yeah, it was it was very more it was it's one of the sort of things where it was being very to, well, to use a really fancy word, morose. It was really being very morose, very muted in a way. It was bright and colourful and vibrant, but also very muted, very sort of grim. Yeah, uh, I, feel, yeah I feel like it, it was meant to be basically like like Batman vs Superman, you know, grey and black, or black broody. and white and all that stuff. Brooding and moody. Yeah, sort of. and uh, something might have happened, like a certain <laughs> Marvel film which came out and that was bright and colourful and did really well with its comedy. And another a DC movie came out and that was all grey and black and white and nobody really liked that one. So Suicide Squad went, hmm, maybe I should... Maybe we should rethink the way that we're doing things. I think personally more it's that they actually realize that nobody wants to see the Joker and Harley Quinn being dark and broody. Mm-hmm. There's another thing. Um, if you notice the background colors, don't the colors remind you a bit about like Harley Quinn? You know, her hair color, the blonde and the blue and the, 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 the red. Yeah. Well, yeah, because that's the whole. That's one of the major things with the, well, with sort of the the Joker collection of characters. It's always been very bright, very vibrant. It's well, it always called the the clown of crime. So it's always been. I think pretty much everything revolving around Harley Quinn, the Joker, the Joker's gangs has always been very bright, very vibrant, very in your face. Because all the other characters are like blues, blacks, greys. It's it's. Yeah, the Joker is literally the antithesis of the Batman. The Batman is very black, very grey, lots of shadows and shading, when the Joker is the one that stands in a bright pink suit. <laughs> stands around in a bright pink suit, waving around, screaming and laughing. So it's the 
the literal antithesis of Batman, and that's I think that's they finally caught on caught on to the idea where Batman is the literal opposite in looks and design and in character, and, and I think, even in how they make an entrance. Batman's always sneaking in the shadow, and the Joker is always running in the spotlight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have to say, Jared Leno looks really, really good. Little. You Leto. talk Leto, Leto. Yeah, L E T T O. Oh my bad, sorry, Jared, Jared. Jared Leto. Leto. He's um, looks really good as Joker. I feel like he's gonna be, like. Yeah, I don't it's, know. It's a very interesting. I feel like I feel like he's gonna be. You know, there's it's a, a. It's it's a very interesting performance because it's almost in between Mark Hamill's sort of cartoon Joker, a very bombastic uh, with the Heath Ledger's very it's like ah ha 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 and then stabs you in the eye and rips out your throat it, that sort of mixture of absolute bombast <laughs> madness to absolute terrifying <laughs> yeah um, I feel like I don't know what kind of joke he's going to be I mean Mark Hamill is all about playing it really really funny and laughing and ha 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 but he's really menacing where Heath Ledger's Joker was more he looks funny but he's menacing as shit mm. so I, I don't think... know where he's gonna come into the um, you know I think he's actually trying to be a mix of all previous Jokers as you said there was a lot of Heath Ledger in there and also a bit of Mark Hamill but you could also see a bit of Jack Nicholson. Yeah, you could also see quite a lot of Jack Nicholson in the first trailer, and also in the way he uh, sort of walks around and things, the way he moves. That reminds me a lot of the Joker from Adam West's yeah. show. So it's like he's a mix between all of them. I think that's part of the reason why I'm quite I'm very interested in seeing how this movie turns out because it's kind of a gamble it's kind of a gamble because it's a cast of characters that has never really had their own movie or been in the movie spotlight at all Yeah. but it's also for the characters that have been is having a quite interesting interpretation of them like the Joker and Harley Quinn and Batman to an extent depending on how long he's actually going to be in it I uh I yeah that's been been a quite interesting chat about how about how how that turns out. But uh, I think it's time to draw an end to that one there. Uh, we're going to be moving on to another movie, which I think is a British movie. I don't know. It's overwhelmingly British. Um, I don't know. It's got loads of fancy effects in it. Anyway, but anyway, it's a monster calls. It seems I saw the trailer for this and became instantly quite intrigued by the whole thing, especially with some of the other movies that have come out of late. Uh, so we're going to watch that one uh, and be back, be back after we've seen that trailer. See you on the other side. And we're back from that trailer. And I actually did a checking up, and it turns out it is British. Well, British and Spanish. It was recorded in... God, I can't remember it was, Liverpool. No. Well, filmed in England and Spain, so... Yay. I was right. It is British. Um, my initial reaction is that Liam Neeson tried his hardest to sound like Vin Diesel, and all I could think of was Groot. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not even kidding. It, it sounds like he tries to emulate... Vin Diesel from uh, the Iron Giant, not from Guardians. That's funny because I got a BFG feel to it. Yeah, the the movie itself feels like BFG, so it's like big friendly Guardians of the Galaxy. Well, it might just be a way of the, doing the voice acting because he might have just been told to try and deepen the voice, and, uh, and you're Some. a big you're a big gianty man, and so it could just be not yeah. a very creative voice direction or something like that. I've never been into these, you know, crawl into your own fantasy world films. I never understood Bridge to Terabitha. Uh, I never got into uh, uh, what's it called? 
and I fell asleep during um, where the wild things are. Mm-hmm. I just never got it. I never got the appeal of that sort of movie. If you know it's all in his fantasy anyway. Spoiler alert. Well, not it's necessarily. Kind of heavily, <laughs> heavily not even implied, but told to us. Yeah. Oh, when he stands there with the giant tree monster behind him, and at the same time, a social service worker worker walks up to him, and just stares him in the face and says, "You need to stop this now." Mm. I but- think if I was that social service worker and the big giant tree thing was not the figment of someone else's imagination, I would Mm. run the opposite direction with very, very brown pants. Yeah, it's very much a coming of age thing, kind well, sort of part coming of age, part dealing with grief, because it pretty much implied that the mum or the mothery figure has got cancer, because she... Uh, at one point has a shaved head, another point is in like a hospital bed looking weak with the sort of head thing, uh, the the hat thing that uh, they do to cover it up. So it's like, yeah, mother's got cancer, mother is dying, mother is dying, little boy having to deal with not just coming, not not, not just getting in as the coming of age thing, going through puberty, but also the, the, the end of the fa- end of the mother sort of thing. I've always been fascinated by things like that. I've always liked like things like Mirror Mask and Ink and things like that. I've always been yeah, I've always quite liked them. But it's it's it's, it's always it's always in 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 the, in the writing because it's much more a drama than it is anything else. And if the writing's just under it's just not believable, if the characterization is not believable, then you go like you're not really miserable, aren't you? You're just a miserable scrote. Yeah. Wait, so uh, the books are probably great. Like all those examples I took before, the books of those I've read have been great. I can get the books, I just don't get it in movie format. Hmm. Yeah. So you're telling me the main character kid, his mom is either dying, has died, or has cancer, and the bully still bullies him. Bully's got a bully, you know. Yeah, Ick. people can be assholes. <laughs> it's I've I've seen people do like bully people over worse and over less. So it's that's not necessarily unbelievable to me. People will be assholes, and people will be assholes to be an absolute knob end. What so, a dick! Yeah, that's actually quite believable characterization. Yeah, I've... I had a classmate that did lose his mother, and he got bullied for it. I like the whole dealing with guilt and how children deal with with not guilt, sorry, grief, and how kids deal with grief angle of it. Yeah, yeah, this is part of the reason why I'm I'm kind of interested in this, but to me it's much more of a drama than anything else is that it has to be well presented and well written and well characterised yeah. otherwise, otherwise the entire thing falls apart and all of those things has to be good and it's it seems alright it seems alright um, whether it is or not is well I'm only going to find out when the actual thing comes out but um, yeah it seems well made it seems like it's, it seems uh, decently written and that's pretty much what it has to do and do well, otherwise it's going to end up falling into the realms of just being cliche. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it looked competently done. It just doesn't look original. Yeah, because it's been done so many times. And when you're looking at this and you're thinking of instantly Bridge to Tabithia, the movie was not that great, but you got the, the idea of what they were going for. It wasn't executed very well. You got what they were going for. It's stuff like Iron Giant, which doesn't really have the same story, but basically has the same feel to it. Then you've got oh, like Totoro, much more impacted story. 
I just don't think I'd be interested in going to see this. This is one of those things that you watch on um, telly. Maybe the eldest niece would want to see that, but I think that's because she's in the right age group for it. I think she'd read the book. I'm not surprised if she had read the book already. Mm -hmm. She reads more than you do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, mm. I'm not going to see it. Sorry, Will. I thought I knew you, you wanted... Mm. You thought this, this trailer was going to be very intriguing. It's just not. We've seen... Mm. Yeah, I'm... Well, I, I'm sort of... Well, I'm, so, I'm just I interested in it from from that dramatical point of view. It is, it, it is a story that has been done before, and it's sort of the hope that it doesn't fuck up. But it's, it's, it's something that it's... Uh, yeah, it's, there's always a film using this sort of storyline coming out every couple of months, so... Mm -hmm. Hopefully this doesn't get added to the scrap heap. Yeah, and so we'll leave that there. And... Yeah, it's... Hmm. And we're going to move on to the next one, which is a western, the mag the remake of the Magnificent Seven. And what as it is, again? And, and as a special treat, um, it's going to be two trailers. We're going to watch the first one first, and then have a little talky talky about that, which is the official trailer, and then we are going to watch after little chatty chat the international trailer. Both of them are quite different in presentation, which seems to have annoyed a few people, because the official trailer is a bit crap. Didn't, isn't this going to be like the fourth or fifth incarnation of the Magnificent Seven? Well, well, the Magnificent Seven was itself an adaptation of Seven Samurai. So the sixth. Including that really awful television show that came out in the 90s. Yeah, well, well the Magnificent Seven is... Well, surprisingly enough, is a, a story that has been around for ages because Seven Samurai came out in what was that, like sixties in Japan, something like that. It's a it's a very old film. It's black and white, if I remember. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, that was back a, in Taho days. Yeah, it's a, it's certainly a story that has been used a lot. Well, if you look at stuff like what was it, the shite Adam Sandler one that came out on Netflix, the piss take of it, the Ridiculous six. It's uh, it's 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 been around the block so many times. People don't have time to take the piss. So okay, scratch that. This is the seventh incarnation of it. <laughs> yeah, including the Adam Sandler one. Right, let's watch this. Yeah, and so we, and so to start off, we're gonna watch the official trailer, which basically just means the American trailer because it's an American movie. Yeah, because the rest of the world doesn't exist. Apparently. <laughs> hey, I'm not American, okay? I'm allowed to say that. Yeah, New Jerseyan, Chris Christian. <laughs> God, that's gonna be funny. I should, I, I should hang that. I should hang you with that more often. It's, <laughs> you're from the place that has Chris Christie. <laughs> uh, see you on the other side. And we are back from watching that one, from watching the first of the two trailers. Uh, you seem like you have words. I have words. You have words. What are those words? Is it Kanye West? Oh, that's part of the words. <laughs> okay, so first I'd like to say, I've noticed trailers doing this a lot lately, and you've got... <laughs> I've never really picked it up because probably you're used to it but now that one's just annoyed the crap out of me why do you have to have stingers in front of the trailer I like think that every trailer nowadays has a stinger which is the little short bit yeah. of showing what's going to be in the trailer what's yeah, the point like of that they are teasing the trailer what like is the point yeah, I have no, I have no idea why they started doing that because it, 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 it really is something especially on stuff like YouTube it's like 
It's like, oh, it's like Magnificent, uh, Magnificent Seven trailer. Oh, I click on that. And then it goes, oh, look, you're about to watch this. It's like, I know I was about to watch this. I clicked on clicked it. Clicked on it. It's... Why? <laughs> look, I get that you do that when you um, start, when you're advertising on YouTube and you need to get as much as your trailer of your trailer before that little skip button comes up so people... Yeah, but you can click on it. But, but you can have two trailers: one that's for the with the skip button, one that for the actual trailer that people want to watch. Exactly. You do have trailers out there that don't have skip buttons that you need to sit through and watch through Not it. Not just the ones you need to sit through; the ones that people actually go and look for, like we did with this one. Oh well, yeah, there yeah. we go. Yeah. So I have a different one for when you're doing the ad, and one for. The one that people are actually looking for. Yeah. Yeah. We'll get to see so, that in a moment. Yeah, so second it's thing my, is second yeah. thing is, sorry I'm not done. Way to break the immersion. Way to break the immersion. I was sitting there going Denzel Washington. Nice. Um what's his name? John Lee? What's it what's his name? That's his name, Buang Hung Lee. John Hong Lee. Awesome. Guy play, playing a Native American. Awesome. Not everybody in the cast is white. Awesome. And then you have to wonder if the reason why they chose the song that they chose is because Denzel Washington is obviously one of the primary leads. And I, I literally, the more of that it kept playing and playing and playing and playing, all that could go in my head is, did they put that in there just because Denzel Washington was in there? I hate that song. I think Kanye West is a prick. I think that song... Get on my Twitter and tell me. Get on my Twitter and cuss me about it, Conway, but you are the worst person to ever exist in the world. You are a twat, and you need to shut your face. Yeah, it's... And go away. It's not... And this and this is the thing that was always... This is the thing that's quite interesting, because the international trailer, the second trailer that was released the same day, is doesn't have a stinger, is shorter, and uses a different song. Uses a song that's much more western-y. Not necessarily western, but western-y. Because it's, yeah. it's uh, oh, I can't remember, I can't remember what the song name is, but it's going, I went down to the no, we town in New Orleans. See, it's that one. Trailer. Um, and my reaction is to this trailer. Now after, what, 15 minutes since we saw it? <laughs> Half of the trailer. Well, over half because it came back towards the end. Feels like it's Denzel Washington talking profoundly while Chris Pratt makes one-liners back the movie. Awesome! Because that's all they're doing. All we see is Denzel Washington sounding profound, Chris Pratt making one-liner jokes, and the others are just sort of there, hardly even talking, and then things blow up. It's training day! Why not let Ethan Hawke and Chris Pratt make the jokes? I was about to ask you, have you seen That is where Ethan be the Hawke question. He, but he, he was in Sinister, so I'm not going to say that. Yeah. But the thing is... Yeah, he's that... in this movie too. Is he? Yes. Yeah. You're lying! No. Yeah. Seriously! Yeah, he's good night, uh, Robbie Shu. I think... Ah, I think that might be where the New Orleansian thing comes in. He might be playing the part French guy or something. Oh. Good night, Robbie Shu. It's R O B I C H E A U X, which is a French spelling. Mm. I am definitely going to see this movie. I love Training Day. Yeah, yeah. The full cast is Denzel Washington, Chris Pat, Ethan Hawke, Vincent D'Onofrio, Buang Hung Lee, Manuel Garcia Ruffalo, and Martin uh, and Sensmia. I feel like, hold on, I need I need to check something. Can you look up the IMDb for Training Day? I feel like um... no, it. It it said in here that it was by the same director, I think it was. Same director or same producer as Training Day. I feel like they, it has the same cast as well. But obviously not the same cast, but some of the same cast. If it's the same director, it's quite obvious that he's going to reuse some of his top names. Okay, I'm going to stop talking now and let Christian have his say. No, that's what I was going to say. It didn't feel like... It didn't feel like a western, it didn't feel like an action film, it didn't feel like a comedy. 
It didn't feel like anything other than Denzel Washington and Chris Pratt talking back and forth. One sounding profound, the other making jokes. Nice. Yeah, but it's nice when it happens once in a while, when you have this, you know, serious situation. But the first scene, the bar scene, we literally saw 20 exchanges right there, all in the same scene. 20 times when Denzel Washington sounded profound, and 20 times when Chris Pratt was joking it off, and they were the only ones in the room. Meaning that's their entire dialogue. And I think with that, I think it's time for a point of comparison mm -hmm. uh, for the international trailer, which I actually think is slightly more even-handed yeah. uh, in regards of Western... So, I'm going to break with tradition and go for a fourth trailer. That is so much better. Yeah? So much better. Uh-huh. Yeah. The first half felt a bit off, but I think that was the music. You had this... It sounded exactly like the trailer music for Transformers. I was half expecting to see the horse cart turn mm. into Optimus Prime mm. because of the music. Yeah, but that, then when they switched the song and it became more hard pumped, it sort of it felt like a western. Yeah. A modern so western. So much better. Well, straight through the trailer, no break in the immersion, got a laugh out of us. That that I think that bear is what you're wearing. I people. think that bear is wearing. Even me. using and, the same joke. Yeah. And in the first one didn't even smile. In the second one, we laughed at it. Yeah. And with and with this trailer, it actually introduces, or actually gives a moment to introduce all of the seven, not just Denzel Washington, yeah. Chris mm -hmm. Pratt, and um, Ethan Hawke. It actually goes through and introduces them. everybody individually. Oh. Perfect. Yeah. You didn't need a stinger in the in in the beginning of it. No point. Didn't need one. You don't need hip hop music. This is not the '90s, people. This is 2016. Hip hop is not that hip anymore. And besides, what happened last time we tried hip-hop in a western? What was that one? Will Smith lost his music career. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> wow, wow, West. Mm -hmm. The uh, song and the film that made him we, lose we wow, his wow, entire West. musical career. The <laughs> career he built his image on. Mm. And now they're trying it again. This is why you do not put hip hop and westerns together. There's just some things that do not fit. And this is also why I mean, and this is also why American trailers suck. This is this is always the this is always the the the, the, the always the interesting thing is that in, especially in recent months or recent years, the the trailers that come out purely for American audiences, or at least ones that are of like one made by official trailers for like the American audiences, are crap mm -hmm. and the ones that are made for in the international trailers or the UK audiences have always been a lot lot better because um, we, uh, we understand subtlety yeah well, I don't know <laughs> I don't know if that's a cultural difference because we are international we're not in America we're not brought up with American things mm. and although you come from America you've been here long enough that you sort of seen beyond what yeah it would have seeped in by now right now yeah. so i don't know i still find it odd though that you have the american trailer and the international because we see it as good here in the uk and in europe overall but it's meant for the entire world. Mm. Everything outside the borders of the United States. I think that's why they try so hard. Like, Amer in the American trailer, you can just slap some stuff together. It's home. You know, when you're... It's like when you, you're you going out. Mm -hmm. You're at home. You're not going to put up, put on makeup and dress up and put on all that kind of slap and stuff. Yeah, much you more go out into the world... Yeah. 
you're walking around in 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 nothing basically <laughs> probably put a t-shirt on that's about it but when you go out into the world you want to go up to tesco's and and stuff like that you're gonna put a, a nice dress on at least know? take on some trousers so put some trousers on put some makeup on you go into work people so, are gonna see you do your hair nights so are we, li- like are we literally comparing <laughs> Kanye West to a pair of dirty boxers now <laughs> I thought yeah, he was... put some trousers on and cover that shit. Because, <laughs> I... well, he's a giant cock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because we, everyone, I mean, Hollywood is obviously, obviously in America. And Hollywood knows what the American audience wants. But you've got to try a lot harder to convince people from another part of the world to go see your film. Mm-hmm. Which is weird because Hollywood is, you know, very American centric. The world capital of movies. Mm. So the movies obviously work for audiences all around the world. So it's well, so strange that they can't make trailers. That well, the same. Well, I, well, I think Hollywood is now starting to get starting to get the idea that its national audience may be more valuable in a way. Because if you look at the Warcraft movie in the U.S., it did pretty badly but internationally it did extremely well mm-hmm. and so it, 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 I think the American cinema industry as a whole may be finally getting to the idea that you don't just have to make the film for Americans there is a rest of a planet out there who will buy your shit and will probably buy a much more varied pile of shit and than... probably value it a lot more but I think that's a bit different with Warcraft, considering that is a game that's more popular in areas like Russia, uh, Southeast okay. Asia, yeah. and areas like that. So it has a bigger fan base outside of the US. So have we stumbled on onto a uh, uh, circle. secret Yeah. There? Yeah, watch the international trailers. Bugger the official trailers. If yeah. if if you have a choice of trailers and one is the international one, one is the official one, watch the international one because the official ones suck balls. I think we can give a much more fair review if it's the international trailer. Yeah, mm. because that's the one that they are actually trying to lure us. Put, uh, yeah, put, uh, it's like you know, think of it as stay staying in, going out. You stay in. You just got a t-shirt on. Don't even do your hair. Probably brush your teeth. Maybe, maybe not. Going out on the road, international trailer. You got your slap on, your makeup on. You try it. You know, you got your little cologne. You pop, to, pop a bubble gum in your mouth. And with that, we are going to draw this episode to a close. If you enjoyed the episode, please do subscribe. We like having people that subscribed and share the video if you liked it as well. It's bringing people in is always nice. Uh, you can find us on Twitters and on the Facebook at at the Tort EG on both. Uh, we like having similarities and stuff like that. Uh, and we'll leave it at that. We will see you next week with more Trailer Park. And so it is goodbye from me. Goodbye. It is goodbye from Kenny and Chris. Bye. Bye. And we will see you next Sunday for uh, more Trailer Park. The beer is wearing people clothes. <laughs> Kanye West is a giant cock.